is Jennifer Bagnashi with Deep Believer. Today we have a special, very special guest with us today. His name is Dr. Sam Kojo Galanian. Did I, did I get it right? You did. You got it right. Okay, Kojo. yes. He is one of the top 1% cardiologists in the country. Um, he was voted the best cardiologist in Santa Clarita Valley. Um, and he currently has a practice called Mender of Hearts. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. And um, yeah, I would just like to hear more from you. First of all, I would like to hear about, or I want us to hear about, more about how you grew up, um, what started you out in the field you're in, and your relationship with Jesus Christ. What was the beginning? For you. Well, the beginning goes all the way back to the Middle East, uh, where I was born. You know, after the 1915 massacre of the Armenian peoples by the Turks, uh, half, we lost half of our nation. Uh, 1.5 million out of 3 million were, were massacred. Uh, great genocide. And then, so the Armenian peoples went all over the world. Uh, and part of them ended up in Lebanon. Part of them ended up in Jerusalem. Part of in Iran, Iraq. So my family, my daddy's family ended up in, in Jerusalem. And there's a huge Armenian community there. So that's where I was brought up. I was born on the Mount of Olives, <laughs> where Jesus is coming back. Uh, and he will land. Uh, uh, in his second coming after the tribulation. Uh, that's where I was born. And then I, then I grew up on the Via Della Rosa, where our Jesus, our Christ, our Savior, our Master, the, uh, the one who calls us beloved, the one who calls us his friend. Uh, I, I grew up on the Via Della Rosa, where he carried the cross, uh, just for you and me. And so uh, the, the place is special, yet I I kind of didn't grasp it when I was there because my daddy would take us to Bethlehem and say, this is, this is where Jesus was born and here's Golgotha and here's where he was crucified. And we, we love Christ. And really, Jennifer, it's kind of crazy because most Armenians are Orthodox. I, I think my people have turned away from God. Uh, they, they know God. Uh, they know the church. Uh, we were the first nation as a whole, 380, to accept Christianity as a whole nation. Yet, because of the massacre, I think many are angry at God, saying, how could you allow that to happen to us? Uh, so they, they're, they may bend the knee, but they won't bend the heart, unfortunately. And, and hopefully that's changing. But anyway, uh, I grew up in the Protestant church, uh, where uh, that's going against all the flow. I mean, that's like 1% of all Armenians where you you like love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And, and you know that there's a relationship. There's a, there's a beauty. There's a, a scent of your heart just burst with thankfulness. And, and his heart burst with sacrifice. And, and you meet together and, and you have fellowship with him. And I, I learned that as a young kid. And at, at age five, I gave my heart to Christ because I was in Sunday school. My mom said, there's a friend, there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. There's a friend who will never leave you, who, who will never sabotage you, who will never trip you, who will never abandon you, who will never forsake you. And I'm like, I want this friend. Give me this friend. Uh, and so it, his name is Jesus, and I accepted him in my heart. At the same time, I heard him say that when you grow up, you will go, you're going to be a heart doctor. He, he inscribed that in the, the tablets of my heart. Uh, so you so heard this not, when you were five years old? five years old, not only did I give my heart to Christ at five, but also I heard from the Lord Jesus that I'm going to be a heart doctor to touch the hearts of mankind. And, and so that's, that's my life. That's how it began. Uh, and I, one, one path is leading me to touch the hearts of man physically. The other path is leading me to touch the hearts and souls and spirits of mankind to, to bring them to Jesus, but they unite. They unite in one because we have one God and I love him and, and he means all to me. So when did you move from Bethlehem over to the United States? How did that come about? Well, my dad uh, loved the scriptures. His heart, you know, the road to Emmaus where the two disciples were talking to Jesus. And they're like, who is this man talking to us? And, and they finally find out when they sit and, and break bread. Uh, and, and he breaks bread and he, he get, takes the bread. He, he thanks uh, God for the bread. He breaks the bread and he gives the bread. See, Jesus is a giver. And so he gives his life. He gives his bread. He gives his life. And so uh, he gives them. The, and they're like, oh, that, that's Jesus. And right, their hearts were burning. That, that this Something is, there's, this man is so different. And, and so as their hearts were burning, uh, my dad's heart was burning uh, in Jerusalem going, you know, Jerusalem is ultimately going to be destroyed. Uh, one third of the Jewish people are, are going to be the remnant. Two thirds are going to be destroyed, according to Ezekiel 
uh, uh, I'm sorry, according to Zechariah chapter 13. And so he said, I've got to get my kids out of Jerusalem. I've got to get them from the Middle East jerusalem to the usa and he's he always told me that usa is smack dab in the middle of jerusalem j-e-r usa l-e-m and so he's like get let's go to the other jerusalem and so he he worked so hard not to get rich but he worked so hard to get his kids to come to america for the american dream and to be in a different land and he called this the the land of honey and milk uh, the new land of honey and milk. So he worked hard to get us here. At the age of nine, I came and we ended up in a place called Chattanooga, Tennessee, y'all. I was different, Miss Jennifer. I was like, what? <laughs> look at here, boy. You got um, you got pantalons. We got blue jeans. Uh, you, we got Nikes and Adidas, and you got sandals. Uh, we got blonde hair, and you got black hair, and we got blue eyes, and you got black eyes, and you don't know how to speak no English, uh, and you get out of our you get out of our place. You know, I got, I got beat up, uh, not because I'm a thug, but I got beat up because I was different. And I, I was pushed down the stairs uh, to a point where one time I was hit hard on the um, playground as we were playing uh, and my nose uh, bled and I had to go to the hospital. So I was hated much uh, because I was a foreigner boy. But, you know, it's up to you what you want to do in life. My daddy and mom taught me to sit on my butt, study hard, and get on my knees and fight on my knees. Don't you ever fight with your fist, but fight on your knees. Pray. Pray to the Lord. Ask him for favor. Ask him for mercy. Ask him for help. Uh, ask him to direct you, uh, to, to direct you in all your paths. And I did at the age of nine. And in a matter of two years, those who hated me voted me the best all-around student in the, in the sixth grade graduation. So I, don't, I can't stand it when people say, I'm on the wrong side of the tracks and uh, you, this is not fair and shut up, y'all. Ain't nothing in life fair. It's up to you to get on your knees and, and ask the Lord for favor. And no matter what side of the tracks you're on, the Lord will heal you. The Lord will come to you. The Lord will deliver you. The Lord will save you. The Lord will help you. The Lord will strengthen you. And the Lord will uplift you with his righteous right hand. Come on. It don't matter what side of the tracks you're on. It matters who you ride with on the tracks. And when you ride with Jesus Christ, it's going to be good. There are going to be bumps. There's going to be heartaches. There are going to be failures. But it's going to be good. That's why we trust him with all Amen. our heart. Amen. That's powerful. <laughs> I love it. What a great journey. Okay. So on top of that, so after this, you graduate from high school and you become what God called you to do. I mean, he became what God called you to become. And so now you're one of the top cardiologists in America. You travel all over the world. Now, what interests me is that I want to know, because I do hear different stories and read different stories about the condition of the heart. Now, is there, when you see different hearts, do you see, is there a difference between the way a heart looks um, in distress or whatever way um, in the United States as opposed to those in different countries? So, oh, for, mm -hmm. yeah, let me, let me go back just a little bit, Jennifer, because people think you, you know, you just got it made. You just, you, everything was handed to you, right? So when we came to California, I did, uh, I did go to uh, pre-med at the University of Southern California and then I applied to medical schools I, at, over a period of three years. I just want our audience to know that I got rejected 27 times to medical school over a period of three years. I was told I don't have what it takes to be a heart doctor. I was told I, I don't have what it takes to be a doctor. Uh, so it wasn't an easy journey. There were a lot of failures. There was a lot of humility. Uh, there was a lot of brokenness to the point where I, I, told, I asked the Lord, what's going on? And he's like, don't call me the Lord, my Lord. Uh, uh, you know, I'm not your Lord. Medicine has become your Lord. So my heart has shifted uh, to, to worship medicine and to become a doctor uh, to the point where he broke me and he said, you make me the Lord of your life. And, and that's when things turned around in my life. But it, it, was, it was not easy. Uh, a lot of people think, oh, he's got it. You know, he's made it. To this day, I fall and fail. So I don't want our audience to think he's just all that. I'm not all that. Jesus is all that. I'm just his boy. I'm just his vessel. I ain't the generator. The Holy Spirit's my generator. So I just want to, the audience to understand that life is not all pretty and life is not all success. 
my failures have become the stepping stones to get to success and and to and jesus carries me and that's the only reason why i make it in life as far as your question jennifer uh that's no one's ever asked me that question actually that's an amazing question is there a difference in hearts in america and in distress or in goodness or whatever it might be versus wherever i travel around the world i believe there is a difference in the hearts of uh, people in america versus those outside of america and, and let me explain explain uh, physically the heart is the same everybody has the same heart really uh, I mean you can have an anomaly where you have dextrocardia and the heart is on the right side of the chest instead of the left side of the chest so, so those are congenital things but overall overall the heart is the same you got two major coronary arteries one on the left one on the right and the Lord made it like that so I don't get messed up y'all one on the left one on the right it's pretty easy like that. So uh, that's that's how the heart is where, wherever you go. It's the same heart physically. But but when you come to the States uh, and you go to outside of the States, I, I feel like there's a more of a desperation outside of the States in the hearts of mankind where maybe they don't have the luxury. Maybe they don't have the money. Maybe they don't have shoes. They don't even got one pair of shoes, y'all. They just don't, they just go barefoot. And maybe they don't have food for the day or for the week or for the month. Uh, and and there they have sicknesses and there's a desperation where, you know, I, we, we were in Africa preaching the gospel in, in Cote d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast. And this lady had a huge tumor and she'd gone to doctors she didn't have the money to take care of this tumor and as we were preaching the gospel of jesus christ and i'm i didn't touch her i didn't go in the name of jesus be healed this is the word psalm 107 20 and the word went forth and it healed them the word uh, the, the word of God is so powerful. It's so living uh, that it, you know, it can cut between the soul and the spirit, the joint and the marrow, and, and know the intentions of the heart. Yet when it goes out, it can heal your body if you're, if you're willing to accept it. And, and that's the word of God. It's not me. It's not another preacher. It's not how we preach. It's the word of God, period. And that's why we shouldn't taint the word of God. We shouldn't like make it water down. Uh, we should preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ, heaven and hell. Give it to them. Give it all because it's all about love. It's all about goodness. It's all about him coming down to earth and loving us and giving us all that he had. So over there where we're preaching, this lady's like, oh, I'm healed. I'm healed. The mass is gone. I couldn't bend down. I couldn't go back. I, I was bleeding and she's healed. Now that's powerful. But here in America, where you go? Where you go to, y'all? Oh, you call 911, y'all go to the doctor, you come to my office, and we got medications, and I got stents, and we got antibiotics, and we got all this, and maybe, maybe we're not desperate enough in America. Uh, and because we've got, uh, we go to the doctor first, see, we go to the lawyer first, we go to the accountant first, we go to the counselor first, we go to the marriage counselor first. Oh, but where's God? Well, when we get desperate enough, and when we don't know what these, uh, these consultants and these professionals don't do the job. Uh, maybe then we go to Christ, and I think we got it a little backwards. So if, if you if you see a difference, I think there's a desperation overseas, and there is not that desperation here. It's not a matter of faith. Everybody's given the same amount of faith. It's a matter of the desperation uh, um, here versus uh, outside of here. That's pretty deep. Okay, so. Um, I want to go back to what you said. You said something really interesting, how, how you spoke to the Lord and then the Lord, I guess you prayed to the Lord and the Lord said, don't call me Lord. I love that because people, you know, we're taught, you know, God is just a God of love, which he is, but God is very direct. He's not a sugar coater. And the fact that he didn't sugar coat with you, I think that's really powerful so like when he said that to you, what was your first reaction, your first response when the Lord said, don't call me Lord because your Lord is actually medicine or your Lord is being a doctor? What was your first emotion? Well, at that time, I, I was like emotionally drained anyway. I, I was broken. Uh, I didn't know what to do because everybody's like, did you make it? Did you make it? Did you make it? And you're like, 
no, I'm a failure. I'm a failure. How can you tell people I failed 27 times? I'm so great. Yeah, that's my dream from the age of five and God put it in my heart and I know it's coming. Well, what do you tell people? Everybody's like, did you make it? Oh, maybe you, maybe you didn't hear God right. So, I mean, you're getting bombarded from all these, I mean, even uh, some people in church going, you know what, you're just after money. And maybe that's why God's uh, tearing you up. I mean, people say the cruelest things at the hardest point in your life. So I was broken and I was on my knees anyway. There was a, a, a military, U.S. military aircraft that went straight up like this. And it said, aim high. That's all it said on, on the poster. I ripped the poster. I got on my knees. That's when I, because I, I didn't have anything to aim for. I, I just, um, I, I lost everything. Uh, everything that I went for was shattered. It, it was gone. It, I, the dream was gone. And so that's when I was on my knees saying, Lord, God. And he's like, uh-uh. Don't be calling me Lord. I'm like, ah, oh, everybody's ripping me up. And now you're going to rip me up. And he's like, don't call me Lord. Don't, this, I don't want to hear it. I, I'm your savior, but I'm not your Lord. And you know, I can't really separate God as a savior and Lord because he's our Lord. He's our master. He's our savior. He's our king. He's our banner. Uh, he's our healer. He's our provider. Yet, But I didn't make him my Lord in my heart. And that day I, I just gave up medicine. I, I said to him, I will give up medicine but I want you to understand something, Lord. Just, you know, you got to tell the Lord the truth. He ain't, I mean, he knows us before we was born. Uh, and so I told him, if you take medicine away from me, a part of my heart will die, but I'd rather have you, my Lord. I'd rather you have, uh, I'd rather you be my master, my savior, my God, than anything else in life. And, and so when that occurred, one, at, at that time, I had been applying to uh, the master's program at USC at, at the medical school in anatomy and cell biology. And I, I had started in it, and uh, I got called into the office at USC by uh, one of the deans, and he said, um, he said, would you like to, would you like to teach our medical students anatomy and cell biology? I'm like, what? Look it, I can't even get in medical school 27 times rejected across the United States of America, and you want me to teach one of the finest, the, the kids in one of the finest institutions in medical school? That's like, you can't play football. You don't know what to do. You don't know how to handle the ball. You can't catch the ball. You tripping. And they asked you to be the coach of the New England Patriots. That's crazy. That's wait, insane. wait, wait, wait. The New England Patriots? Yeah. Well, I'm from Connecticut. Okay. And um, I'm <laughs> sorry. You just had me at New England Patriots. They asked you to be, you know, the coach of the San Diego Chargers uh, or, or uh, you know, the uh, Denver Broncos. And that doesn't make sense because you failed. And, and now they're making you a coach. And, and I failed to get a medical school. And they're making me a teacher in, in the medical school. So I can't get in medical school, but I can teach the kids, the, the students in medical school. It's ridiculous. That happened one week after I just gave up everything. And I, the Lord just, he's just like, you know, when it says in Numbers 6, 26, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord shine his face upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Bam. That's exactly what happened. And it's not that because I gave up everything. It's because he's kind. It's because he's gracious. It's because he's a, a God of favor. And that's the reason why things happen in my life. It, it's when I broke. It's when I just gave up everything. It's when I looked to him. Uh, when I sought him. When I called upon him. That's when things changed in my life. Otherwise, I was looking at me and I was looking at medicine. And I'm just, it, me and my generator, we blow up. We need to get recharged. But God and his generator, the Holy Spirit, on all day long, all night long, 24-7. It's eternity. And that's what I'm going to hang out with from now on. His generator, his Holy Spirit. It's not by my might. It's not by my, my power. But it's by the Spirit, say of the Lord. Amen. So it wasn't until you surrendered, until you made God your number one. So would you say that at that time in your life, um, unconsciously, um, medicine was your God? Not knowing. Yes. Yes. And I, I didn't know that, Jennifer. I, I did not know that. I, you know, I think it's what you, where your treasure is, that's where your heart's at. You know, if your treasure is medicine, then your heart's there. And if your heart's there, then your treasure is your Lord. And, and if my heart is with the Lord, then my, my Lord is my Lord. So that's when he taught me that wherever my treasure is, 
where, whatever, whatever I spend the most time in, uh, whatever I, I, I salivate for, that's my Lord, period. So our audience, whatever they're pursuing, that's fine. You know, pursue life, uh, pursue happiness, uh, pursue joy, pursue your career, pursue family. Oh, that's beautiful. But if that's it, baby, if that's it, if that's where the treasure is, then that's your God, period. Don't be messing with like, well, I don't know. I might be not. No, that's your Lord. Go, go to the mirror and speak the truth because when you speak the truth you find out who you are who i am and who god is and i want god to be number one in my life and our audience i think wants god to be number one in their lives amen so you had to move out the way for god to get his work done i love it okay so now let's continue more on with the heart based on scripture i know you know your bible based on scripture how powerful is the heart physically and spiritually and why does it matter well, the, I, I love the, the heart is amazing because God don't talk about the kidneys. He don't talk about, you know, the liver. Once in a while, there's a liver. Uh, and, but, but the heart, the heart is the, the matter of all things. And, and, and when you get the heart, he also talks about the word all. They come together, you know, in Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, it says, trust the Lord with all your heart, not some of the heart. Trust him with all your heart. And, and then it, it tells us in, uh, I believe it's in uh, Jeremiah 23, um, 23, uh, 13, I think it is, or no, 29, 13. 29, 13, seek the Lord with all your heart. And, and then in Psalm 9, 1, it says, thank the Lord with all your heart. And so it's all about the heart and, and all heart. He wants all our heart. He wants us to seek him so that we may find him. He wants us to trust him so that he may direct our paths. He wants us to thank him so that our hearts will burst with joy and rejoicing instead of depression. Because you all know why we depress? We depress because we're thinking about ourselves. We think about, oh me, oh my, what happened to me? Why did this happen to me? How come they said that to me? And that's, that causes depression. So I got the cure for depression. It ain't no pill, y'all. The depression cure is Jesus Christ and thankfulness. And you're like, I don't want to thank him. Then y'all going to stay depressed. So go when you don't have to feel like you're going to thank him. You just thank him anyway. You let the mouth speak and that mouth will make you feel ultimately thankfulness and you will find that thankfulness in him so uh, the heart is powerful and god talks about the heart all the time but he don't want part of our heart he wants all of our heart and that heart is supposed to thank him that heart is supposed to seek him that heart is supposed to trust him and above all that heart is supposed to love him with all our hearts this is deuteronomy 6 5 love the lord with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might and, and that's a process. I found out this ain't once a month. It ain't once a year. It's every day on the hour, every hour. We have like an incentive spirometer in medicine. And what is that? After you get a bypass or after you get a surgery, uh, you put this tube, uh, you have this straw-like thing, big straw. And the person takes it and, and takes a deep breath with it like this and you're supposed to get this little ball to go up like 500 cc's 1000 cc's uh 1500 2000 and and the better your lungs are the deeper breath you take the more you see that little ball go up and you're like oh that's good the lung function is bad but back to normal it's getting better and better so we we're supposed to take that deep breath with all your heart with all your soul just give it all every day i tell them to do it on the hour every hour so it's one o'clock do it 10 times it's two o'clock do it 10 times it's th three o'clock do it 10 times don't stop so you get stronger and stronger and that's what we got to do in life with jesus christ go to him seek him on the hour every hour when you walk say lord thank you that i got legs that i can walk with when you see the sunshine and you see the birds say lord thank you for my eyesight you think you're human and you see in color that's why you're all that and you're that good no you see color because god is good and he gave you eyesight thank him for it thank him for it thank him for the food you have today because many people in the in the world they're in famine they don't got no food thank him for the food Thank him for your legs. Thank him for your eyes. Thank him for what he's given to you instead of what you don't got. And so the, the thankfulness of the heart will propel you to new levels. And I believe we're thankless society and we've got to change that. And it's a, it's a choice we make.
It's not what our circumstances dictate. It's a choice we make. So let's trans transition over into where we are now in our current day, 2021. Things are looking crazy. And um, <laughs> the condition of the heart. Do you believe in the rapture? Do you believe in the second coming? And if so, what condition does our heart need to be in in order to... I definitely believe in the rapture. I definitely believe in the second coming uh, because I believe in the word of God and I believe the word of God is infallible uh, and it's unbreakable and you can burn it, you can bury it, you can ban it, but the word of God lives. You know, the, the, the grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord will remain forever and eternally. And that's a, according to Isaiah 4 verse 8. So the word of God is just beautiful. So what, what is the difference between the rapture? Uh, we're in the end times. How do you know that? Because, you know, you can go to prophecy in Ezekiel chapter 38, 39. You can see that Russia, Turkey, Iran are going to get together. And, and, and if you look also at the book of Psalms, it'll tell you that they're going to join with Syria. They're going to join with Saudi Arabia. They're going to join with Egypt. And they're going to attack Israel. And you're like, that ain't never going to happen. In fact, when Ezekiel wrote that Russia was going to attack Israel, Russia didn't even exist. That's the strength of prophecy. That's how good our Bible is. And today, Russia, Turkey, Iran are aligned. They're allies. And they're in Syria at the Golan Heights, ready to jump all over Israel. It's already happening. In, it's, it's in plain sight. So if you don't believe it, then you got to go to prophecy and go, ooh, ain't nobody predicted that. Nobody came up with that. This was prophesied 2,500 years ago through the power of the Holy Spirit. So that, that's going to happen right after the rapture. So where is, what is the rapture? Jesus talked about it in John 14, 1 through 3. Don't let your hearts, ooh, there goes the heart. Don't let your hearts be troubled. And he's saying this right before he's being crucified, y'all. I mean, look at how Jesus is. He ain't worried about himself. He's worried about you and me. That's why he's the only God. That's why he's the savior of the world, because he came down every other religion. You got to climb up to a God, but he came down because he's humble and he's obedient and he loves you like crazy. No matter what you've done, he's in love with you. And so he says, don't let your hearts be troubled. In my father's house are many mansions and I go prepare a place for you. And when I come to take you with me, bam, that's the rapture. And then you find the rapture in 1 Corinthians 15, 51, where it says, in the blink of an eye, those who are dead in Christ, we just buried my daddy. I love my daddy. He was such a great man of God. And he taught me how to love God and love, love people. And he taught me all these, uh, how to love the scriptures and how to love Jesus Christ. And so uh, in 1551, the dead in Christ, my daddy, who's buried his body, maybe in the grave, but his soul and spirit is in heaven. And so the, when the rapture occurs, his body is going to be glorified in a split split atomic second and it will join his spirit and soul we who are alive oh i wish it happened right now we'd be disappeared right now we're going to go through the ceiling through the roof and everybody's concerned about getting a concussion and needing a neurosurgeon there ain't no excedrin in heaven y'all so we're going to get glorified bodies and our bodies are going to change we're going to go through the ceiling through the roof and we're going to meet the lord in the air and that's the rapture we go through the bema seed after that seven years of uh, beauty in heaven and and then there's a marriage oh the marriage of the lamb uh and then there's the supper of the lamb y'all can eat what you want and they know cardiology going to check your cholesterol so it's going to be good up there y'all and so but down here hell on earth seven year worth of tribulation and the only way to get your toilet paper and to get your water bottle is to get the 666. You're going to have to get it on your forehead and you're going to have to get it on your right hand, one or the other. And look at if y'all come to my office today, what, what do we make patients do today? We make them stick their forehead out and we check their temperature. I'm telling you, people are getting conditioned to stick their forehead out so people can check their temperatures. But one day it's going to be checking the 666. The 666 don't come out today. It comes out in the tribulation. It comes out in the middle of the tribulation. There's going to be chaos, volcanoes, tsunamis, uh, hail going to come down from heavens, uh, fire from the heavens. You're, there's going to be uh, there's going to be true for the first time global warming, y'all. Uh huh. Uh, the sun is going to scorch people. The, it's global warming ain't today. Global warming will occur during the tribulation, and it's going to be scorching people. I mean, there's going to be darkness. There's going to be disasters. Uh, it's going to be bloody. 
and half of the world's population that today would be four million out of eight will die during half of the tribulation and then it's going to even get worse you to to, to survive you need the 666 if you take the 666 you're going straight to hell because there's no redemption when you take the that's selling your soul to satan if you take the 666 so after that seven years the second coming will be jesus christ comes down with his bride on a white horse that man don't come with a donkey no more y'all he ain't all humble he's like got fire in his eyes a sword in his mouth and it's on let's go Jesus Christ is coming back in Revelation chapter 19, verse 11, and he's coming back, and we're coming with the saints of God come to him, and all these world powers will come so that they can take down Jesus Christ. And Jesus, with a word, he's like, bam, you're gone. And he's going to take them all down. There will be no more world government. Jesus will rule uh, a, a thousand years in the millennium, and the earth is going to change. The lions, they ain't going to roar no more. The snakes, they don't bite no more. People will live to be a thousand years old, and that's the people who barely make it through the tribulation and give their hearts to Christ. We, the glorified body, we can't make no mistakes. We, we're glorified. After that comes the great white throne. Mm -mm. Great white throne where all the dead that did not want Jesus Christ, that rejected him, that hated God, or even were just good, they were just good, but they didn't want God. They'll rise with their eternal bodies and they'll come to the great white throne and they will meet the Lord, their maker, their savior, and, and he will open up the books. And if you're not in the book of life, then you're gonna, your ticket is to, to go to hell. And God doesn't send people to hell. People chose to go to hell. People rejected God. People rejected their maker. People rejected their creator. People rejected their redeemer. And they go to hell. It's tragic. I don't say that with glee. I say that with my heart wrenching, uh, with pain. And I don't want nobody to go to hell. That's why I preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, to give them love, to give them hope, to give them Jesus give them eternal life. And then us will be with him forever and ever in eternity. And they're going, it's not going to be TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. It's TGIH. Thank God it's heaven. It's going to be fun. We're going to go from universe to universe. Our taste buds are going to burst. We're going to be joyful. The heart's going to be like, oh, I'm so happy. I'm with Jesus. And ain't no sorrow. Ain't no death. Ain't no trouble. Ain't no taxes. Oh, it's going to be good. It's going to be good, y'all. It's going to be good. I want you to be with me. And all you got to do is say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I didn't know I was a sinner. But this crazy cardiologist from California, he's talking about me being a sinner. And he's talking about uh, Lord Jesus. And oh, okay, well, the Lord Jesus came to die on the cross for you because he loves you. And he will take away all your sins. And he will wash you clean. And you will be his son, his daughter. And, and when it all comes down to death, don't y'all worry. The body's going to go and sleep. Your spirit and soul go straight to heaven. But without Jesus Christ, mm -mm. it's going to be a place called Hades until the rapture, uh, the second rapture, the resurrection uh, to the great white throne, and then it's uh, to, to hell. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Ain't nobody coming to the Father except through me, John 14, 6. Jesus is the way, y'all. Why is he the way? Because he's the one that died for you. He's the one that cares for you. He's the one that's the true living God. All of the gods, they're dead. Jesus is alive. So what would you say to those who are like, wow, that sounds great. Okay, it's going to be a rapture. You're going to have great taste buds. You're going to live with Jesus and all this stuff. But what if they're like, well, I'll have a second chance. During the tribulation, how, what would you say to them? Would you say, uh-huh? Yes, there, there is. I'm sorry. There is a second chance. That's very true because there's going to be 144,000 according to Revelation 7 and Revelation 14. Uh, there's going to be 144,000 Jewish evangelists like little Paul's or big Paul's running around and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And people are going to come to Christ at that time. But, you know, the price will be to be beheaded and the price will be to go in hunger and the price will be to be uh, 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 turning on your faucet and seeing blood come out of the faucet. It's not a pretty scene. And if you ain't coming to Christ now, mm, it's going to be very difficult to say, I ran out of toilet paper and I ran out of water and I don't have my gummy bears. And what am I going to do with my own self? I better go get myself the 666 so I can get all these things. Mm, it's not going to be easy. It, it's, today, today is the day of your salvation. Today is the day. 
And, and that's made specifically clear in our Bible, not tomorrow. And the more you listen to the word of God, the more we hear the word of God, the more we say, it ain't time for me to come to the word of God, the harder the heart gets. The heart becomes like a stone. And that's what we got to, you know, that's what you got to look at in, in um, uh, it's in Jeremiah 11, 11, 19, Jeremiah 11, 19, that God will take away the heart of stone. Don't, don't, don't let him give you a heart of flesh, a heart of flesh that comes to him, that loves him, that accepts him. Uh, let that heart of stone as you're talking, let the word of God break that heart of stone and, and accept, his, accept his blood so you can have a heart of flesh, a heart of goodness, a, a heart that's, that wants to love him and come to him today. Because the, the, the further you go from the word, the harder the heart becomes and the harder it becomes to come to Christ. Amen. Amen. So today is the day of salvation, not tomorrow and not after the rapture today. Ooh, yes. Today. Okay. So about this vaccine that's going out, do you think that this is a condition for the market of beasts? Do you think we're being conditioned for that? Do you think it's a precursor or do you think it's just, Hey, some just vaccine floating around? What's your, what's your opinion on that? I think a lot of people think, you know, I have people calling me and asking me if the chip 666 is in the vaccine and so the the vaccine can't have the 666 it can't be implemented into it because the the 666 does not come out until the mid tribulation it's not even at the beginning of the tribulation so the tribulation is seven years and at three and a half years that's when satan really exposes himself and and blasphemes god goes into the temple of god and says i'm god and then the, the false prophet comes out and makes people bow down to the Antichrist and Satan. And then they implement the 666. So I don't believe the vaccine has the 666. I don't believe the vaccine is, at this point is mandatory. Nobody is made to take the vaccine. But at that time, you're really, uh, uh, you're really made to take the 666 just to survive. So today, what I, uh, what I see more is a breakdown of society and it's not a matter of black and white it's not a matter of brown or yellow it's a matter of the heart it's a matter of rejecting jesus or accepting jesus it's it's there's only two kinds of people it's not male female black white it's not hispanic or russian it's a believer or an unbeliever period that's that's the that's the only difference in people either you believe in christ or you don't believe in christ and so the, that's the most important issue in life right now. It's not whether the vaccine is a precursor. It's are you a believer or are you an unbeliever? Because the vaccine is not going to make you or break you. The vaccine is not going to send you to heaven or hell. But the fact that you're a believer or unbeliever, that's going to set your eternity. So vaccine doesn't set your eternity. You being a believer sets you for eternal life. And you being an unbeliever sets you for eternal hell. You make the choice. And that's a good answer. Very good answer. Now, you wrote a book called, well, I'm sorry, you have a series of books. You've written a lot of books. Your <laughs> most recent is Rev It Up Verse by Verse. And I mean, I, there's some powerful stuff in here. I just would like to read two of them. The yes. first is, if one chooses to bow to Christ today during the church age, it is done in devotion and admiration. If one refuses to bow today, he will likely bow the knee to the Antichrist during the tribulation. Anyone who bows the knee to the Antichrist will also bow before Jesus Christ after the millennium at the great white throne judgment. Could you just elaborate on that? I know what it means, but viewers may not know what that means. I think it's powerful. Amen. So uh, God has sent his son, only son, and this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his only son as a propitiation or atonement or uh, atonement for our sin. He bought us out of the slave market. So if you want to be bought out of sin, just like I open up heart arteries and, and there's a clot there, a blockage there, and the heart's going to die because the blood flow is not coming to the heart. So too, we were born in sin. And, and our spirits are dying. And the only way to open up the spirit is not through Netflix or Hulu or entertainment or going to church or being a Baptist or being a, a, a evangelical or being a Pentecostal. That don't get you nowhere. But the only way to open up the, that spirit artery that's full of sin and, and destruction is through the blood of Jesus Christ. 
And that blood, if you accept it, your spirit lives. And that's bowing down to the cross. Jesus was obedient to the point of death. And he wants us to be obedient as children to come to him as our papa and to say, I messed up. And that takes humility because the pride says, I ain't messed up. I'm my own God. What you talking? I am and I will be. No, you ain't. And no, you will not be because you just look at yourself in the mirror when you wake up or you do your business in the bathroom and you stink. You ain't all that. So uh, get yourself put all together and figure out that you ain't God and, and you're, you are not the God within you. That, that's not who you are. But the God of the heavens, your creator and the redeemer will come into your heart and your soul and your spirit and transform you completely. And that's bowing down to him now. But if you don't bow down now, if you decide, nah, that ain't for me. There comes the rapture where Christ will take the, those who love him, those who walk with him home, and you'll be left behind. And you'll be left behind, and it's not going to be pretty because it's going to be one world government. You will have to bow the knee to the government. You will have to take the 666 if you want to survive. And once you do, you'll, that's a, a, irredeemable. Mark my words. It's an irredeemable. You will not go to heaven ever. Um, or or you, you'll bow down to the Antichrist because you're like, I, I want to survive. I want to survive. And it's all about me, me, me in this world. I want to survive. I want to survive. So you take the 666 and then you die. And that's only a seven year period of tribulation. And then after the millennium, a thousand years, the wicked or the good, either way, that didn't want Christ will come and be raptured or resurrected, that's called the second resurrection, because the first resurrection is the one, the rapture for the Christians, for those who love him. The second resurrection is a 1,700 years later, where the wicked or the good who didn't want Christ are raised up, come to the great white throne of God, and they bow the knee to Christ then, but it's too late. It's, so are it's you saying up. that good people go to hell? There's going to be a lot of good people in hell. There's going to be a lot of good people in hell, people who did not murder, people who are kind to their neighbors, people who gave their, little, the, their milk to the neighbor because the, the, the neighbor was in need, people who stopped by the road and changed a tire for somebody, people who gave to charity, people who wrote a million dollar check to a building, people who build the building in their names. There's going to be a lot of good people that, 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 that feed people, that help people, that give to people. There's going to be a lot of good people in hell because they didn't want Jesus Christ. Because he he's, not by the way. he's the truth. He's the life. Jesus is the way. If you got any other way, you in the wrong way. He is the, he's the truth. If you got any other truth, then you got a lie. And he is the life. You got any other life, then you got death. Jesus is the way. He's the only way. He's the only truth. He's the only life. And if you don't got Jesus, then you don't got life and you don't got truth and you don't got way. And that's why a lot of good people are going to go to hell. Amen. It's really sad, but it's true. And this, that's a gospel that's not really preached in churches uh, anymore nowadays. But I'm really glad you brought that up. I have one more um, excerpt from your book. Uh, this is from page 168. It says, the rapture will be in a sequential order, such as a carpool, where people are not all picked up at the same time but all will arrive at the same destination. Could you just explain that to those who may not understand? Because I think it's really powerful. I think it's a great analogy. Sure. Well, the first one that was raptured is Jesus Christ. Uh, he, he got his glorified body. And that we find that in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 20, because he is the first fruits of the resurrection. He rose first. He resurrected first. And he got his resurrected glorified body first. And then the, the, the next peoples that are on the way, uh, it would be us, the, the churchgoers. And I really, I want to be very careful when I say that. Because you put on a little tie and you put on makeup and you wear a pretty dress and you got your pretty shoes uh, and you got nice looking shoes and you go to church and you all like, praise the Lord. And that don't get you to heaven, okay? That don't get you in the rapture. Your heart and soul, all my heart and soul has got to be sold out for Jesus Christ. We got to be washed in the blood of the lamb to get to go to the rapture. And so we got to be in his word to love him, to honor him, to give to him. And, and when he comes in your heart, you're ready, set, go. 
So the rapture happens next, and it's about the next thing on the prophetic calendar to happen. So that's the second, this is the carpool now. This is the second peoples who get to go to heaven. Jesus first, now comes, he's the first fruit. Now comes those, the, those who love him and those he loves, and we get to go up to heaven. So that's the second uh, rapture or the second people who get to go in the carpool. What's the next one? You know, there'll be, uh, we didn't talk about this, but in Revelation chapter 11, there'll be two prophets that come. And, and I believe uh, that that's Moses and Elijah. We don't have time to get into it now. The book, oh, let me show y'all the book. This is Rev it up, y'all. Rev it up verse by verse. And this is only chapters one through 11. Um, and then this is, this is Rev it up. This is volume two. This is chapters, um, this is chapters 12 to 22. And, you know, it's very different. It's very different because it's got little hearts in it. Uh, and the little heart says, oh, this is the author's favorite. And it breaks, you know, uh, you reading everything and you're like, wow, that's cool. It's got little medicine sign in it that caduces where I take medicine and cardiology and apply it to book of revelation, which makes it a lot of fun. And then I got a geopolitical section geopolitical would say you're not only talking about revelation that was written 2000 years ago maybe they'll have i'm talking about russia and china and the u.s and iran and iraq i'm talking we're talking about now so i tie it all in together so the people are like wow i get it i finally get it it's so cool so uh, the, so we were talking about the rapture then then comes the two prophets um and i believe it's moses and elijah and, you know, people argue about that. I don't care to argue. So if somebody else, who cares? It's the prophets and it's, it's people who are speaking the word of God. That's what's important. Their message is important. Not really the messenger, the message. And so the message is the word of God. And they will die uh, because the Antichrist will kill them. And they will resurrect uh, after three days. And that's another form of the rapture. The, the 144 people, uh, the, the Jewish prophets uh, and uh, the evangelists will be preaching. They'll be resurrected up. That's another part of the rapture. The people who are in the tribulation who are like, uh-uh, uh-uh, I'm not taking your 666. I'm coming to Christ. I should have come before. I didn't. But now I know he's real. And I want the real deal. And they come to Christ. They'll get beheaded. Uh, um, their spirit and soul goes up to, to heaven, but their bodies will remain down here after the second coming. They will be raised up. Uh, and so it's a sequential time of people. And, and there's an argument about when the Old Testament saints um, will, um, or, or the Old Testament saints will be raptured. It's within that seven year period. So all are coming to Christ. All are going to be raptured. It's just that people take their turn going up, but ultimately those who love Christ, those who love God are all going to be with him. And we're all going to be, that's the first rapture or the first resurrection. That's a good thing. The second rapture or the second resurrection is a bad thing. That's for the ungodly, those who didn't want God. They'll come up after a thousand, seven years after the millennium and the tribulation, and they'll get their eternal bodies and then um, they'll be uh, sentenced to death because they weren't written in the book of life. Let me ask you this. Is your name written in the book of life? The only way to get in the book of life, it ain't is because you're pretty. It ain't is because you got money. It ain't because you got a degree. It ain't because you're all that. It's the only way to get in the book of life is to be washed underneath the blood of the lamb. Are you washed underneath the blood of the lamb? I hope you are. And if you're not just it's so simple. It's, it's so simple. Jesus said, uh, all you have to do is to, is to believe in him. But you understand Satan believes in him. Uh, he ain't going to heaven. To believe in him is to trust him, to love him, to seek him, and to give your heart to him. And all you got to do is believe in Christ and you shall be saved. Amen. And this is why I wanted to have you on, because you are a true deep believer. I know I told you this before, but you are a true deep believer where it's all or nothing, God or nothing. And and there's no boundaries with God. There's, there's no sugarcoating with God. Um, it's the real deal. It's not religion. It's all relationship. It's all, you know, um, inspiration from the, from the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much. And I, there's a lot of people listening right now who are like, okay, this is a really powerful, deep conversation. I'm thinking about giving my life to Jesus, but how do I do it? Could you just explain that? Because time is short and people are beginning to realize, okay, Revelation is kind of accurate. You know, things are coming to pass the way the Bible says. Maybe the Bible is legit. So if you could just lead people to Jesus, and then I'll have you pray. 
Amen. So it, it says in Romans 10, 9, that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts, ooh, there goes the heart again. If believe in our hearts that, that God raised him from the dead on the third day, then, then we are saved. And it's that simple. So uh, it's, it's a matter of, you know, the jailer, Paul was in jail and there was an earthquake and the jailer was about to kill himself because how can this be? Everybody's going to escape. And Paul's like, chill. We all here. Don't, don't, don't harm yourself. And, and he's like, wow, you got the real God. I mean, he did all this and y'all stayed here and y'all didn't run away after you were beat up and placed in shackles. And he goes, what must I do to be saved? And, and Paul gave him a simple answer. You must believe in God and you will be saved. And so it's, and people make it so difficult. People make it like, okay, I got to do this. I got to, you ain't got to do nothing. In fact, if you did, and if I did, we mess up. God already did. He sent his only begotten son that whoever believes in him, shall not perish or go to eternal hell, shall not perish but have everlasting life or will go to heaven. So that's how simple it is. It's to come to say, one, I'm not all that, and I'm a sinner. I, I, I guess I was born in sin. Yeah, that's true. So I'm a sinner. That's one acknowledgement. The second acknowledgement is the only way I can get out of this is not through my works, but it's through the beautiful work, the complete work of Jesus Christ. That's why he said on the cross, it is finished. He did what he had to do. And, and the, the third thing is to start speaking with the mouth and saying, okay, now I acknowledge it. I know who can save me. Now I'm going to say it. Uh, Jesus, I'm a sinner and I come to you and I, I want you to cleanse me of all my sins. And that's it. That's how simple it gets. And then you're like, well, what do I do after that? The Holy Spirit will come into you. He will teach you all things and he will get, bring to remembrance what God has taught you according to John 14, 26. So that's the beauty of walking with Christ, that he will walk with you, run with you, teach you, uh, give you new wings that you may soar. Uh, and there ain't nobody else that's going to do no family, no doctor, no lawyer, no accountant, no teacher, no nobody. Only Jesus, only Jesus can lift you up. Amen. Now, could you pray for our viewers? Hey, I sure will. Thank you. Uh, Father God, I, I want to thank you for your love, your mercy, your goodness, your grace. I, I, I just, I bow before you um, knowing that I'm unworthy, but your blood has made me worthy. Uh, that I, I want to join the, the angels in Isaiah 6 that constantly are saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. I want to join the, the angels, the cherubim in Revelation 4 that, that say the same thing. They're holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. All honor and praise belong to our God. You're worthy. You're a good God. You send your only son to die for us. So who would do that? Who, who would give up everything? Who would give up heaven, glorious heaven, to come to earth, to come to a little manger and stable in Bethlehem. Who would do that? Who would ride on a donkey? Who would get on the cross? Who would take the 39 stripes on the back for us? Nobody but you. And even if a man did all that, uh, take the stripes, go on the cross, he couldn't save us. Only Jesus could save us because your blood is pure. Your blood is clean. You are God and you are the lover of our souls. And Father, uh, those who are listening now and who will listen ultimately, Father, uh, please let them know that you're in love with them. You're not mad at them, that you think highly of them, that they're your kids. They, it doesn't matter if they're black or white or Hispanic or Russian or German. It doesn't matter, Father. It doesn't matter if they're male, male or female. It doesn't matter if they're rich or pure or poor. It doesn't matter if they're educated, uneducated. It just matters that you love them and you want, you've poured your life for them. You've given your all to them. And Father, we thank you for that. And, and those who want to come right now, those who want to just be at your table and say, I want this food. I, I want this goodness. I want this mercy. I, I want this God. I, I've never seen a God like this. I've never heard about a God like this. Father, let them come. Let them bow the knee and say, take me. Uh, do what with what you want with me. I, I'm giving my life to you. And Father, it, it, come into their souls, cleanse them, and, and Father, heal them. I'm, I'm talking to people right now who've got cancer. I'm, I, we're praying about people who've got neurological problems, uh, GI problems, heart problems, lung problems, uh, uh, all kinds of sickness, Father. Touch them. Touch them in the name. By those stripes, in the name of Jesus, I proclaim right now they're healed. They're just healed. Uh, and let them go to the doctor and say, I I'm healed. Check me out. Do your test. Father, I proclaim that in the name of Jesus. And I proclaim salvation to people who are listening to me who say, right now, right now, I come to Christ and I give my heart to Christ. I thank you, Papa. 
I thank you because you're a good God. You're a loving God. You're a helpful God. You're a giving God. You're a gracious, gracious and merciful God. We, we just praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. 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 So how can we find you? Where are you online? Are you on social media? If we wanted to reach out to you. Uh -huh. So uh, my website's called beaconofhearts.org, B-E-A-C-O-N-O-F. H E A R T S. Ooh, there goes that word hearts, y'all. Dot org. O R G. Beacon of hearts dot org. They can find me on Instagram at D R Kojiglanian. That's a long word. K O J D R stands for Dr. D R K O J O G L A N I A N. Uh, they can find me on Facebook at Beacon of Hearts or Mender of Hearts or uh, Dr. Sam, D-R-S-A-M D -R -S -A -M space Kojiglanian. Uh, so these are the things. And then the, these books are uh, on my website. Uh, they're on Amazon, Book Baby. But if they want it signed, sealed, and delivered, they go to my website and uh, they go to the store, beaconofhearts.org to the store, and then click, click. And, I, and then please tell me who to sign it to and I shall sign it. Uh, do, do you need these books? The, they will teach you so th this is not all about revelation this is the whole bible and finally written in a su such a form that you're like i get it i understand it and there's this is rev it up series uh, these are the verse by verse series uh verse by verse but we have rev it up rhyme by rhyme uh to make it a poetry the book of revelation it's a very short book and then we have rev it up but for those people who don't like to read i got rev it up Image by image is most gorgeous pictures. And you're like, ah, I get it. I see the image and I finally get it. So um, it's a great present, birthday present, uh, whatever kind of present uh, to give to people, to hand to people. And it's a lot of fun to read. Um, so I hope the peoples get it. And uh, we're just going to proclaim the word of God. That's I, I, I'm not the generator, the Holy Spirit is. So I'm just going to lift him up all day long, all day long. Amen. Thank you so much, Dr. Sam. Um, I hope to have you again sometime. I would love to even elaborate more on, on, on scripture and where we are now today. I'd love that. I'd love that, Jennifer. It's been wonderful to be with you. And it's, uh, this is the beauty of, of walking with Christ. Uh, you, you have two strangers uh, that have never met and yet uh, our hearts are tied in Christ and we know that we love Christ and that we honor each other. And one day we're going to be in heaven with each other. And by the way, there's going to be uh, different tongues, different people from many nations. But the reason why you don't go, oh, he's white and he's black and he's, uh, he's a man and she's a woman. The reason why you don't go that because we ain't the center of attention. Jesus is the center of attention. And that's the beauty of walking with Christ. It ain't about you. It ain't about me. It ain't about our listeners. It's about glorifying Jesus Christ and walking in his grace. And that's the most beautiful place to be. The most beautiful place is to seek him and to find him so that he may walk and talk with you and communion with you. Amen. Thank you so much, Dr. Sam. You're welcome. Thank you, Jennifer.